So similar to the BJT that we had a very short discussion on PNPs, we have a very short discussion on PMOS transistors, so P-type MOS transistors, right? So the discussion is that we have pretty much the same structure. So I have the gate, I have the oxide, I have this substrate. However, in in instead of P-type substrate here, I have N-type substrate. Instead of N plus diffusion regions for source and drain, now I have P plus diffusion regions. And my symbol is going to look like this, similar to BJT, where emitter went to the top and collector went to the bottom. Again, this time source goes to the top, drain comes to the bottom. Okay, and then similar to BJT that we care about the emitter base here, we care about the source gate, not gate source. So we're going to be dealing with this, with this V source gate, and uh, basically the threshold voltage this time is going to be a negative value. Because it's going to be very annoying to deal with a negative uh, threshold voltage, and then it's going to make the math really confusing sometimes, what I always do and I really uh, suggest you guys to do is that instead of using VSG, you can still use VGS. But this time, put it in a basically, uh, put it in this two like basically vertical lines so that you know that you have to deal with the absolute value of VGS, right, or VG, VSG. So you don't care if this is negative or positive. You care about the absolute value of the voltage difference between gate and source, right? And then again, you can put, you can use the absolute value of the threshold voltage so that you don't care about if it's a negative or positive. So if you actually use this expression, it works for both NMOS and PMOS. So you don't have to worry about like using the neg like the signs properly and if you're actually uh, if you put in if you have to put a negative here or positive here because the threshold is negative none of that you have to really worry about if you actually use the absolute value of VGS absolute value of VTH okay um, and also absolute value of VDS so similar to uh, NMOS for PMOS we have a saturation current that is independent of VDS except for the channel length modulation and we have a triode equation that is exactly like the triode equation of the NMOS. Uh, the other good news is that similar to BJT, the small signal model of the PMOS is identical to the NMOS. So you don't have to even think about it. So whenever you have a PMOS device, you can actually use the exact same uh, small signal model as the NMOS and things are going to be exactly the same. So uh, the last thing I want to mention is that the only difference perhaps between the DC equations of PMOS uh, compared to NMOS is that here, instead of mu N, we're going to use mu P. So the, instead of mobility of electrons, we care about the mobility of holes because everything is going to be working with holes simply because the channel that I have here is actually a channel of holes. So I'm going to have basically a bunch of holes between source and drain, but that's pretty much it. And I know that the current this time is actually going from uh, source to drain simply because, well, these are positive charges. So this this arrow that you have here is really telling you the direction of the current. Uh, if it's basically this way, it means that it's from source to drain. In the case of an NMOS, if you remember, the arrow was really telling you that the current is actually from drain to source. I hope this was clear. Okay, the last thing I want to mention is again something for your information. We're not going to be really using it in this course, but it's actually quite interesting. And that is basically, if I mention, if you remember, I mentioned that in uh, in any integrated circuit, in any microchip, you always have a shared substrate. You're not going to have a bunch of different substrates, right? So, like if you have a million transistor transistors, they are going to be all they're all going to be sharing the same substrate. However, we just saw in the previous slide that when I have an NMOS transistor, I need a P-type substrate. And when I have a PMOS transistor, I need an N-type substrate. So how's that going to happen? Because how's that going to work? Because, well, is it going to be N-type or P-type? Well, the way it works is that generally people go with P-type substrate. And they all basically, uh, they, they make all these NMOS devices uh, using this p-type substrate directly on top of the uh, on top of the p-type substrate by the way you have this body contact that i talked about before and you can connect that body for all nmos devices directly to the substrate and directly to zero volts however for pmos devices what people do is that they first create uh, something a region that we call it n well by the way this is the cross section so you can imagine that this is a 2d kind of a thing so you can imagine that this is really uh, it's a big region, right? So it's it's not just uh, the this is not it. It's just the cross section. Okay, so you have you you build an anvil using an n-type material, 
and then you build your transistor on top of that anvil. So for every PMOS device, you have an anvil. So it actually has a body that is connected to that anvil. You can set this body um, to the this time to the highest possible voltage in the uh, basically in the circuit. So that's again another difference, big difference between NMOS and PMOS. The body of a P NMOS device, as I said, it has to be connected to ground simply because there's a PN junction here and there's a diode, and we want to make sure that this diode is always reverse biased. For the exact same reason, I have a diode this time from P, like it's always from P2N, right? So this diode is now from source to the body and from drain to the body. And I want to make sure that this diode is actually reverse biased. So I have to make sure that the N type material, which is the N well, is connected to something that is the highest voltage in the circuit. So I'm going to connect that to VDD. So that's a very big difference between NMOS and PMOS devices. With NMOS, you connect the body to zero with PMOS you connect the body to VDD and then uh, this is the way the way that I just explained is the way that basically you could have both N type and P type MOSFET uh, devices in your in a same on the same chip and you could have millions of them this kind of uh, technology this kind of basically arrangement is called CMOS technology so complementary MOS technology because the NMOS and PMOS are kind of complement of each other they call this complementary CMOS technology again you're going to learn a lot more about the CMOS technology in the digital logic design course but this is a nice uh, kind of a sneak peek kind of a thing into that discussion so I'm pretty much done with whatever I wanted to talk about chapter six of the textbook but I thought I should add this last slide to compare BJT with MOSFET to somehow hoping that uh, it helps you organize your thoughts. So uh, in BJT, we had an exponential relationship between VB and IC. So IC was, as I mentioned, um, IS exponential of VBE over VT. In MOSFET, we have, at least in the saturation region, which is the good region of operation, I have a quadratic relationship so i have a half mu n or mu because it might, might be n mass or p mass c ox w over l vgs minus vth squared okay so this this is one difference um, in pjt the active region was the good region quote unquote and uh, in n mass we have saturation region or saturated mass is actually the good mass and um <clears throat> excuse me, and an active region BJT is actually a good BJT that we like. Again, similarly, saturated BJT was the bad one, and then, well, triode MOS is the region that we don't want to be. Um, with BJT, we had a finite base current, so like there was a current flowing into the base, but in NMOS, we don't, or in MOSFETs, we don't have any gate current. This is really good news because remember the biasing uh, discussions that we had with BJTs, and then like we always had to neglect the IB and then see if our approximation or our assumption was valid or not. We don't have any of those the kind of stuff in MOSFETs. The MOSFET gate current is going to be always zero. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to actually um, approximate it to be zero or anything like that. Okay. With BJTs, we had early effect uh, that caused this expression not to be perfect. And we had a little bit of basically non-ideality in, uh, in our device being a uh, voltage controlled current source in MOSFETs we have channel length modulation that well while it's very different in terms of its principles and fundamentals and like why it's happening uh, at the end of the day it has a similar kind of effect it causes the transistor to be non-ideal current source a non-ideal voltage controlled current source the other big difference in terms of physics it's not going to matter in terms of a um, circuit analysis but then in terms of physics if you remember the principle of operation of a PJT we had current because of diffusion of car charge carriers um, from the emitter to the collector. The, there was a diffusion through the base and then they reached collector. In the MOSFETs, you saw that like basically everything is happening because of the drift, because there's a voltage source applied and there's an electric field and that is really driving the uh, charge carriers to move from one place to another. So the, the current of a BJT is due to diffusion, the current of a MOSFET is due to drift. One last thing is that, well, in a certain operation region, which is the D triad region, 
uh, MOSFETs op offer us a voltage controlled resistor, which well helps us to actually build switches, and that's why the entire field of digital electronic was actually came to life. And with BJTs, we simply don't have such a thing. So like basically, that's a, another kind of an advantage that MOS has that BJT doesn't. Okay. Hope everything was clear to you. Talk to you next week.